Hello captains and welcome to this X-Plane 10 video. I received so many requests to do a video on FS Global Weather for X-Plane and show my settings for SkyMax Pro version 3.2, RWC and X-Plane. So in this video we are going to do just that. What you see on the screen right now is the default built-in weather generation engine of X-Plane. It is important to note that this weather generation engine is a robust and sophisticated weather system. It however comes with a few limitations. The most notable are number one, the number of weather layers represented in the sim is limited to three. And two, the current version of Explain does not provide for upper wind data outside the United States. Now the news is that version 10.5 of Xplain will resolve the issue of upper wind data globally. So without further ado captains, let us begin looking at FS Global Weather. Once you install FS Global Weather, uh, you are going to be presented with this screen. From this screen, we can go to the tools, settings, and go to Xplain. In here, you just need to specify your uh, path to your explain folder. Uh, you can select the um, update rate, which I have currently at five minutes. You can increase this rate uh, so that you don't uh, get the flicker or the, uh, you know, the pauses while the weather updates. Uh, but in fact, in uh, SkyMax Pro version 3.2, this is actually handled very well. Um, so you don't actually get this, and I'll show you in a minute uh, the settings uh, that you need to have in order to prevent these uh, these pauses or sudden weather weather changes. So I will leave this at five minutes. Then what you need to do is you need to go. I'll put cancel here. Now there are various options here. You can load a weather file, and it explains here exactly what this is and how you download the weather file here, there is static weather download and dynamic weather download. I'm going to select the dynamic weather download option. And now it says choose date and time, most current weather or historic. So you can select either the current weather or you can select historical weather based on uh, a certain date and time um, as you can see here. So you have the dates, you can select the date and once you select the date, you can also select uh, the time. And you can say continue to download the weather. For the purpose of this video, we are going to use the most current weather. We'll say continue. And now the um, FS Global Weather will download the weather information from the internet. Once the weather download is completed, you will be presented with this screen. What you need to do is you need to select Explain from the drop-down menu. As you can see, it also supports all versions of prepared Microsoft Flight Simulator X and Flight Simulator 2004. We select Explain and we simply click on the link that says Start Weather Transfer. As you can see, uh, you are now presented with the weather information at the current location. Now it will tell you that we are at Frankfurt, Germany, echo code, echo code, beg your pardon, echo delta delta foxtrot. This is the Zulu time and this is the uh, METAR information right here. You've got your wind, visibility, precipitation, sky cover, uh, and as you can see you have 800 feet, few scattered at 2500, broken at 8000, scattered at 18000. and because we are using FS Global Weather, we are going to be able to see the clouds at these layers. You've got your temperature, pressure, and upper air uh, wind information, uh, altitude, and uh, temperature. Okay, so now this information is inside the sim. There is a very important um, setting here that we need to do, which is you need to go to weather and now make sure that this download real weather data from the net is not ticked. 
Otherwise, the information that comes from the built-in weather engine of Xplane will override the uh, FS Global weather data. So make sure this is unticked. All right. Okay. So at the moment, we have everything ready. Um, FS Global Weather is now active, and what you see now is the FS Global Weather uh, working uh, for the generation of the weather. Here are my rendering options. What is important to note is the cloud detail setting I have here, which is set at the minimum. 10% 10, uh, 10 not too many. And the reason why I set it at 10% uh, is because once you start moving this slider um, to the right, uh, you will really notice a huge degradation in performance. So my recommendation is to keep this at 10%. SkyMax Pro with Real Weather Connector and FS Global Weather will really do the magic and you don't really need anything more than 10% if you're using uh, SkyMax Pro version 3 and Real Weather Connector. Okay, so these are my settings. You can pause the video if you wish uh, to look at the other settings. All right, and now let's go ahead and take a look at my SkyMax Pro version 3.2 settings. This is version 3.2. Uh, the cloud um, area covered is about 6,000 and everything else is pretty much left at default. I have the um, the uh, resolution at high which or crisp um, and then I've got the uh, cirrus layer resolution at medium. Uh, what else uh, there? Reflections of course is off. I've got a solid stratiform um, overcast representation, lens flare effects are on, and reduce the cloud shadows to about 0 0.2. I've noticed that this option has um, has really huge effect on performance. It really kills the FPS. So uh, 0 0.2 is is a nice setting. You'll still see the reflection of of the clouds on the ground. Uh, but it will not really cause any degradation in performance. Cloud terrain blend softness, if you're not flying over a mountainous area, this is really, uh, it's not really going to make any difference. Uh, I always set it to 1000 uh, because the mountain tips look very realistic uh, with this setting uh, at max. So these are my SkyMax Pro version 3.2 settings. One last thing before we begin our test flight is the RWC um, settings which as you can see it's set to automatic um, only when real weather is on okay now because FS Global Weather uses a METAR file uh, to represent whether it is read by Xplane as if it as if it is the METAR file of Xplane itself hence you would use this option now Remember, if you're using NOAA, or if you're using the weather generation engine of, uh, let's say, EFASS, then you need to set it to always. So you need to ignore explain settings and use this option for the NOAA weather plugin. And the reason that you do this is simply because NOAA weather plugin sets the weather uniformly across the globe and you will still need the data to come from NOAA, meaning the uh, turbulence, the wind uh, direction and speed, but you still uh, want Real Weather Connector to place the clouds at the correct altitude and the correct form. The, this is a new option in uh, SkyMax Pro version 3.2 which says never change visible weather. This option means that while you're flying, the area immediately around the aircraft will not change. It will stay as it is until the, you, you actually pass on the block uh, set in the uh, cloud draw distance. So nothing will change in terms of the look of the weather around you. 
Let's release the parking brake. Full power. Okay, captains, uh, we are now uh, approaching uh, 7,000 feet, uh, which is the initial uh, altitude that we've set, and I'm going to now do a level change so that we climb to 8,000. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to begin a turn. Heading select. The performance, by the way, in uh, SkyMax Pro version 3.2 has been improved as advertised. Very, uh, very convincing, very fluid. Okay, let's go ahead and, as you can see now, uh, there was a short pause, or it wasn't a pause, it was just kind of a flicker, and the weather was updated. Alright, captains, uh, we are now cruising at 8,000 feet. Uh, we're heading into an area of uh, pretty bad weather, it looks like. So let's go, let's wait and see what happens once we are inside this you know, weather system. Alright, here we go. So we're entering this area of, uh, of clouds. Still pretty smooth and fluid. Alright, I'm going to make a left turn. very convincing. There's some bad weather right over there. So let's fly right into it. Let's switch to external view for just a moment. into this bad weather area, as you can see the rain is uh, pouring now on the windshield. Lovely. Alright, let's go ahead now and climb to 10,000 feet. Okay, captains, so we are now at 10,000 feet, and uh, we've cleared the rain area. Uh, but as you can see, we're still surrounded by a lot of clouds. Uh, performance is pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, at our frames. Okay, 
think so. I'm getting about 42, 40, 30, whatever. <laughs> it's not very stable. Uh, but I'm getting good frames. Performance is pretty good, although we're going through some very thick clouds. Uh, performance hasn't really suffered. All right, let's go ahead and make a left turn here. Let's go into the cloud to see how performance gets affected. Well, performance is perfectly fine. There is no degradation in performance as we go through these clouds. Okay. Now I'm going to do a final test uh, before we conclude, and that is to position the aircraft at 35,000 feet. So let's do that. Okay, Captains, uh, we are almost at 35,000 feet, and what I want to do now is I want to switch to external view. Alright, now what you see here is the same problem that everybody that was complaining about using SkyMax Pro version 3, which is the area covered, which is about the 6,000, it covers this area here around the aircraft, but this area here appears to be empty, and it will only start getting loaded after the, the aircraft passes this square. Let us do one test here together, and Let's go to SkyMax Pro version 3 configuration, and I'm going to set the cloud area to 40,000, which is the maximum, and say apply. Let's see what happens now. Okay, I don't see that big of a difference in terms of, you know, the uh, cloud draw distance. I do see clouds farther than uh, than uh, in the previous setting, but it is still not very convincing at this altitude. All right, captains, this is actually the 6,000 square kilometer that the weather was generated for based on the settings. Now, while you are flying into this area, with my current RWC settings, no changes should occur. We did notice that, of course, the clouds did change uh, while we were flying. So I'm not sure if this option is currently working per design intent. The other thing is, as you fly in any direction, once you, for example, let's say that you're here at this point, there will be absolutely no clouds outside this square. And this is not very realistic, or it doesn't give you a very realistic look. So I think still for IFR, uh, for very high altitudes, uh, above maybe 20,000, uh, I think you will still experience things that are not exactly realistic. Uh, but for anything below that altitude, below 20,000, for VFR, I think the uh, the uh, uh, SkyMax Pro version 3 and RWC provide for a very convincing experience. Captains, I hope that you've enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. I hope that it has been a useful video. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other. Bye-bye for now.